a couple issues a warning after being scammed out of $10,000 in Nassau and how a Facebook post caused one family to miss their dream vacation. Hey everybody, if you are new here, make sure you like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all things theme park, cruise, and travel. And if you are a returning viewer, make sure you click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Now, let's get into today's first story. A couple was issuing a warning after being scammed out of $10,000 in Nassau, Bahamas. This couple was sailing on Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas and it made a stop over in Nassau, Bahamas. Now, if you've ever been to Nassau, you know that the people on the island are always trying to sell you something, have you rent a taxi, braid your hair pretty girl, they want you to buy jewelry for your wife, your girlfriend, your neighbor, your mistress, your baby daddy, your baby mama, they want you to buy something on the island. After all, this is how they make money. But this couple says that they were actually scammed. The couple alleges that they went into a shop in Nassau, Bahamas because they were offered a free massage. Now, if you know anything about traveling, nothing is free. This couple says that they were offered a free massage and they knew that they were going to be upsold and they were okay with that. The wife was offered a free 10 minute facial and the couple decided to take up the representative on their offer. And this is where everything went wrong. The couple says that they knew that they would be upsold, but they were pretty confident that they wouldn't spend anything that they didn't want want to while in the shop. This is probably their biggest mistake. Salespeople in Nassau are some of the biggest and best salespeople you are going to come into contact with while traveling. This is their livelihood and every sale they are dependent on and they are going to do whatever it takes. Now this doesn't mean that everyone on the islands that you visit are trying to scam you out of money or take advantage of you, but this is a cautionary tale so it is something that you need to be aware of on your next vacation. This couple goes on to say that throughout their free facial process, they were also given free drinks and they ultimately decided to make a purchase totaling around $200. They go on to say that they were served even more drinks that were stronger and decided to make one more purchase before they left the shop. Once they got back to their ship, they realized that they had been charged more than $10,000 for their shopping experience on the island. The couple goes on to say that they tried to dispute their charges with Chase, but those charges were ultimately denied because they did receive goods, they did receive services, and they signed the receipt that said, all sales are final. The couple decided to file charges with the Florida Attorney General, which I'm not really sure why they did that, but that was ultimately refused as well because the state of Florida has no jurisdiction in the Bahamas and this is where the purchase ultimately took place. So my biggest takeaway from this and my best advice for you is to be aware of what you are doing. You need to have a budget in place before you go on these islands and don't be suckered into buying something you really don't want. Let's be honest, they're not going to have anything in the Bahamas, Jamaica, Turks and Caicos, anywhere that you can travel that you can't get back in your home country. There are no miracle creams, serums, or facial treatments that you can get on vacation that you can't get back home. Personally, I do not spend any money when I go into the port unless it's like a souvenir for a family member. My best advice is to take cash with you. That way you know how much you're spending and know what your exchange rates are. It's not that hard to download an exchange calculator or even take a screenshot of an rate of exchange for the country that you're going to so you know exactly what you're spending and you can confirm if the person standing across the counter from you is telling you the correct prices. 
Before I get into my last video, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date on all things theme park, cruise, and travel, please consider subscribing with that notification bell on so you never miss a video. It's totally free for you, but it helps my channel grow. And ultimately, that's the goal here is to get these videos out to more people so they can know what's going on on their next vacation. Now, let's get into our last story for today. In my last story for today, a woman says that she is out more than $12,000 and her vacation was ruined. Why? Because of a mistake that her husband ultimately made on Facebook. Now this story was developing over a few days and more and more details have come out. Well, this story is about Tiffany Banks who booked a cruise on Carnival Celebration and ultimately did not get to go on the cruise. And there is some developments in the story that I wanna get your thoughts on. So make sure you let me know in the comments below. Now let's get into some details. Tiffany did post a video and we're going to take a look at that right now and then I want to talk about some additional information that came out recently. Several people have asked me to do a video here on TikTok so I have to laugh or I'm going to sit down and cry and just absolutely lose my mind. So yesterday morning I got an email from Carnival saying um, two of our excursions had been canceled. I called Carnival. It was like you know, 6.30 whenever I called and of course they weren't open. So at nine o'clock I called and they said, your excursions were canceled because your cabin was canceled. Uh, full blown panic. What are you talking about? Like we've been planning this vacation for a year. We booked on the presidential Excel suite for those of you who don't travel or cruise a whole lot. It is the biggest room on the carnival celebration ship. Part of the issue with this story is that if you cancel your cruise within a certain amount of days of the cruise taking off, you are not subject to a refund of any kind. So this was actually, um, we were flying out yesterday and I found out yesterday morning that all of this had happened. They said that the online system had been logged into and it had been canceled. Um, we talked for almost uh, over two and a half hours and the only solution that they were willing to offer was two interior rooms. I just can't even fathom how, how did they think that that's right? Two interior rooms for a presidential Excel suite, which we have nearly $15,000 tied up in. Here's my issue with what she said. Now she says that she, she didn't even say it. she kind of laughed through the fact that the cruise line offered her to interior rooms in place of her suite now the issue with that is this cabin which she will go on to say later in the video had already been rebooked um i literally purchased um the internet package the day that they supposedly said that i canceled why would i cancel my cruise if I'm buying all of this stuff and making last minute preparations. He said the only, he emphasized the only option that we have is these two interior rooms. I got out a recording because I was like, excuse me? I never even fathomed that you all wouldn't offer me my money back. Like that's just a, a done deal. Like you all canceled my cruise or the system glitched or whatever happened. Um, you were gonna give me my money back. I'm just flabbergasted. I don't even know, like, are you kidding me? I am trying to put myself into Tiffany's position and I think at this point in the video, she doesn't fully understand what happened and why the cruise was canceled. So I do understand the emotion there and I do agree with what she does next, which is gathers her family. They go ahead and they take the flight down to the port to talk to them in person to see exactly what's going on. Now, I have had similar situations, but well, not really. But let's keep watching to see what Tiffany finds out when she gets to the port. They go down and we are fully prepared um, that they're gonna tell us no, that we can't board the ship. And um, we're not planning on making a scene. We're gonna absolutely do our best to stay calm and cool. 
but I want somebody a resolution. Like you are going to do something. You're gonna make this right. I even told them that we were here for an extended time because we're staying extra time in, in Florida whenever we get off the cruise. I told them that we would be happy to switch to another cruise. Um, they said, nope, nope, nothing's available. I, I just can't, can't believe. This is a different video that we're gonna look at and Tiffany's giving us a little more insight as to what's going on and how the cruise got canceled. Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick update um, since the last video I posted. I actually was contacted by Carnival and we have answers on what happened, but we do not have resolution. Um, get your big cups ready because lots of disappointing tea coming at you. Um, official word is we have been victims of identity theft, even though their stance is they have, there has been no security breach. But my husband and I posted on social media a couple weeks prior to the cruise um, with our countdown tracker and somebody created a fake profile that same day and added our booking to their online account. They're saying that it's coming from British Columbia, but they're not 100% sure. They can't exactly pinpoint the location. So they've created this profile. They've canceled our reservation just two days before. I have so many questions on how that's even possible why carnival allows somebody to just add somebody's booking number without like proof or anything this is definitely a policy that needs to be updated that's not okay um second thing is had they listened to me whenever i said i didn't cancel and done a quick and swift um investigation we could have had this squashed and they could have gave us our room back like some kind of policy needs to be updated. Uh, anyways, the great little um, caveat here, they were offering me um, a $10,000 onboard credit for future use if I post on social media that there has been positive resolution. Even after telling them multiple times, I'm not interested in it. We're not interested in selling with Carnival ever again. That was their offer, take it or leave it. But it was contingent upon me posting on social media that we had positive resolution. So yeah, guys, there's our update. I'm not lying. I didn't lie about anything. Um, here's the, just like a few snips, just so I'm trying to keep it short of the phone conversation of like kind of those just little highlights. That this was not a security breach on Carnival's part. We strongly believe that you were sadly a victim of a form of identity theft. Position. The the booking was added to a profile that was created on our website with the same day that the booking number was posted on Facebook. And while it was added to a profile that date, it was not canceled until approximately 48 hours before the And the credit is what we are prepared to offer of the 10,404. It would also be contingent on you posting something to the effect of that Carnival has now resolved the issue. <laughs> a couple of things here. One, personally, uh, my husband and I briefly talked about this, and we both agreed that we would have taken the interior cabins with a $10,000 credit because essentially I'm still getting my vacation and I could potentially use that $10,000 credit to book that suite on a later voyage. But of course, that's my opinion. That's what my husband and I think would have been best for our family because at least we're still getting our vacation. Like I just said, we can use that credit to book that same suite potentially on a different vacation at a later time. But here's the one thing I do not like. I do not like that Carnival said that they would give that $10,000 credit on the contingency that this creator of this TikTok video says that there's a full resolution and Carnival basically took care of her, the customer. I don't agree with that. I don't like that. And I probably would have been a little offended if that was something that was stated to me as well. Now, if you're going to give the customer a credit, then just give the customer the credit. But again, that's my opinion. What do you guys think about this story? Let me know in the comments below. But it gets 
even a little more complicated. So there was recently an update about the booking information being put out onto social media. Now, Tiffany states that she posted a countdown for her vacation, but what she failed to realize or failed to mention is that her husband actually posted the actual booking number online. Now, if you've ever been on a cruise, especially Carnival, you know that all you have to do to get into your account is have your last name, your booking number, and with that information and that information alone, you can manage your booking. Ultimately, this mistake is what caused the person to go in there, go into their account and cancel their booking. For whatever reason, they decided to just be nasty to this family and go in there and cancel their booking. Maybe they're jealous, maybe they don't like this family. There's really no good reason to do this to someone. Ultimately, the biggest takeaway is to never ever share your booking information on social media. Now, my husband tried to get me to go on cruises the first 10 years of our relationship and I would never go. I never thought it was something I would care about. And then eventually he got me to go on a cruise. Long story short, we went on probably five more cruises that year alone. And with all the excitement of going on my first cruise, I actually did also share a booking. I was so excited for my first cruise that I did something very similar to this family and I shared a vacation countdown, but I just downloaded an app and I was able to share it to social media that way. Let this be a lesson to us all to make sure that we never share our booking information on social media. That is something that unfortunately with that little bit of information as well as your last name can potentially lead to someone going into your cruise vacation planner and canceling your cruise and we don't want that to happen to anyone else and who knows maybe cruise lines will come up with a better policy but until they do make sure you keep your information secured so this doesn't happen to you that's going to be it for today's video thank you for hanging out with me and if you want to stay up to date on all things theme park cruise and travel please consider subscribing with that notification bell on so you never miss a video until next time